BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. You might have seen To Catch a Predator in the past with Chris Hansen, and they would uh, feature a bunch of stories about men who were on the internet trying to meet underage girls using, like, chat rooms, and then after that they would switch over to things like social media. And that's kind of the image that was really broadcast to an enormous amount of people around the world that's like guys would show up and they're just like, oh, uh, I'm just really dirty. I couldn't be doing anything with an underage girl. I don't. I didn't even take a shower. And then sometimes, you know, they would just be like, I'm just here to eat. I'm just here to drink the lemonade that Chris Hansen would have laying out for them. They would just make up stories and they'd be like kind of like bumbling oafs and buffoons and such. And that's kind of like what a lot of people think about when they think about online predators. But the fact of the matter is, uh, it's actually a much deeper and darker art than that. And it can even get to the point where there are even people on the internet who are kind of doing virtual cult leadership, which is something that we talked about on this channel for a while. Recently, we had a little bit of a discussion about the disappearance of Michaela Bali from Saskatchewan in Canada. And that really just made me think a little bit more about um, just the concept of online predators, people grooming someone for something on the internet, as well as something even to the contrary of people who are just like trying to lure somebody out. I mean, like even before grooming, just like, hey, let's meet up at this location or something like that. And you really think that the internet is very... Um, very sinister when it comes to things like that. And I only mention that because, you know, we, we deal with some elements like that in the case of Michaela Bali. One of the, that might be one that we'll cover on the uh, channel in the future in like a full kind of more detailed upload. But I really began to think about that because I also recently heard a program that was just about um, social media and specifically using the app Kik, K-I-K. And like I once asked somebody like what does kick stand for because you know it's just K I K and the person just shouted it at me. It's like it doesn't stand for anything. What is wrong with you? And I was like, well, that is kind of a weird response. No, but kick just means like um it's a mistyping of L O L. If you were to look at it on like a normal keyboard, you would see that K I K and L O L are kind of close to each other. Um, just throwing that out there. So in, and in case you don't want to get yelled at by some psychopath from down the street or something like that. But I digress from that. The thing is, though, kick can be done um, not only in almost an anonymous fashion, 100% anonymous, that is, but it's very difficult for parents to kind of monitor what's going on with children's social media if they download something like kick. It's one of the less detectable things out there. But what I would say about um, the entire concept of this is people who are sexual predators on the internet, people are, who are dealing with human trafficking, people who are dealing with the type of sort of internet cult leadership, they are much more sophisticated with their methods than what you would see on something like To Catch a Predator and people who are just kind of unsuspecting and such. I mean, there are people that are successful with luring I mean, not only children and teenagers, but just even adults, like, luring them to secluded areas and getting them in trouble. And we even saw an instance once of, like, it, it became known as the Tinder murder here in, in, here in America. A guy and a girl met on Tinder, and they went out on a date, and she asked him to come back to, his, to her apartment. She asked him to come back to her apartment, and then her boyfriend comes out and murders him. And that became known as the Tinder murder and things like that. Like, it's so easy to meet somebody on the internet. And that turns into a horrendously dangerous situation. And that's kind of where we are in the new millennium. We're going to be dealing with a lot more interaction and a lot more leadership and a lot more um, lack of guidance, really. That's why I almost said the word leadership. There's just like you don't necessarily have that kind of guiding force that can tell you that this person is safe and this person is not. This person is truth-telling, and this person is not. Look at the basic concept of catfishing. You think you, you're talking to somebody and developing a relationship with this person, but in reality, it's a completely different person. And that's just bound to happen. And, I mean, some of the things that we can really do to prevent things like that are just... Um, I, just I would just say, though, it's just kind of awareness about the high likelihood that you could be talking to an imposter on the Internet... And just kind of raising awareness about internet education in general, internet security. I mean, 
Also, if someone is making enormously gross demands, we talked about this during the Nigerian scam upload where it's like, send me $50,000 and I will, um, I will uh, send you $2 million in return. That's something like that. I mean, people are aware that that's a scam. But how about this? Meeting up with somebody that you've never met before who doesn't really have many photos on their Facebook page who is just... Um, buying you a cell phone and mailing it to you in the mail, only call me from this phone, and stuff like that. I mean, those are the type of people that also really need to be avoided. But the way this ties into the concept of brainwashing is some people think that this person is safe because it's like they feel that this is the only sort of outlet that they would have. Maybe just this person is pretending to listen to them. And that's why we really wanted to get to the heart and soul of the issue. When we said sophisticated, I mean, they are going to be able to simulate kind of an empathetic person. They are going to be able to simulate someone who is warm and welcoming and caring. The reason why is, and I was just kind of reading up on some of this stuff recently, people like that study the situation. They study the material, they study the literature, and... They, instead of using it to help people, they use it to increase their own sort of selfish, sociopathic, lustful, greedy nonsense. They just use it to enhance their own greed and power. That's kind of what they do when they learn about things. Even if it's just through like learned experiences with other human beings, they use their abilities for evil. And it's not just a bunch of bumbling buffoons that you're going to be seeing. These people are just going to be just like very good at masquerading and to the point where they make other people think that they actually care about them and that you can, you can trust this person and you can feel good with them. Think about all the people that you've talked to on the internet. Is there anybody like that out there? Is there anybody out there that you thought was welcoming at first and then they turned out to even just be a jerk? Well, this is, goes beyond that. This is when you meet someone face to face and it turns out they aren't who they say they are. And I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Young women are going to be enormous targets for this. To an extent, young men and, um, and children all across the spectrum, anyone under the age of 18, children, teenagers, male or female, absolutely, is going to be all across the spectrum. Mostly because we're going to be, um, I mean, if we're going to be dealing with something like human trafficking and human smuggling, those things affect men and boys as well. And by men, men and boys, I mean, we're talking about children, adolescents, teenagers, those things are all very real. To kind of pivot in the conversation, we talked a little bit about the concept of cult leadership on this channel for a while, and recently we did an upload on Stefan Molyneux called Stefan Molyneux Genius or Fraud, where we were kind of having a discussion about his material. But this also relates to the concept of kind of conditioning people and grooming people on the internet and using social media to do so. Because what this is kind of like is, it's sort of like you have somebody who is just making them feel like that this is the only person in the world that I can trust, and this is the only person that is kind of like available to kind of connect to my emotional feelings and such. And that brought up the concept of defu, D-E-F-O-O, -O, disassociate from your family of origin. And that's kind of some of the things that tied into the accusations of cult leadership surrounding Stefan Molyneux. And um, he was just kind of telling people that if if your friends and family do not agree with your worldview, then you should disassociate from them. And it's just sort of like listening to some more of his stuff recently, not not even about like um, parents and such, but just about people who are dealing with relationships. It's like online therapy almost. And that stuff is horrendously emotional. It's so like emotionally inducing. And basically it's just kind of follows a formula get a person to talk about their most emotional and painful experiences and then tell them, oh, you're emotional and you feel pain. Well, I mean, this is, you could say that to anybody. But the thing that I noticed, though, with uh, that particular example, and I sort of see this from a few other things that are very similar on YouTube, is that it's just like the concept of gaslighting. Gaslighting meaning that um, you try to make somebody think that they are something which they are not. You make them think that they have a certain mental issue that they do not. And then, like, you you don't accept anything to the contrary. It's this type of dominant and submission dynamic where it's like, no, don't, don't, don't you say anything to the contrary. I told you, you're in pain, you're broken, you're shattered, you have no self-esteem, your life's a mess. 
don't ever tell me anything other than that. And then you just keep telling that to people over and over again. And it follows the model of cult leadership that we talked about in the past, where the, what the three major points of cult leadership we mentioned, discrediting the ways of the previous years, producing a new way, and saying that there is something missing from your life, and the only way that you can get it is to follow the new way of the cult leader. And this is often done with, um, in the past it was kind of done with producing a new book, but now on the internet, as you see, this can be done through like even um, just spreading a new set of ideas, like that disassociating from the family of origin stuff we mentioned. So the internet is really changing. And it's another way to just kind of condition people. The kind of heart and soul of today's upload is really just to put it out there that people are conditioning people to kind of um, break away from their established relations, to just either leave their families or to meet up with strangers from the internet or just to use the internet in general as this manipulation tool and a manipulation device. And it happens in a variety of ways. We have the sex traffickers. And we also have the type of sort of online personality cult leaders. Another one that we've talked about a lot on the channel is Marvelous Work in a Wonder, whose spokesperson is named Christopher Namelka, who used to pretend to be the reincarnated version of Hiram Smith from the Mormon Church. Now, that was also something very similar to what we described to the things about Stefan Malinu, but it's also about just the concept of this person is creating... Um, a new pathway for people to follow, saying that all everything in the past is wrong and it's not what you think it is, and the only way to get anything in life is to follow the new pathway, and you cannot challenge any of it. That's exactly the stuff that I heard from Stefan Malin, don't ever tell me anything to the contrary. Christopher Namelka says the same stuff, and that's when things really start to get like you know into online cults, when people are saying, do not challenge me. And it, it's way beyond the internet. People do that offline. This is just we're talking about this on the internet because when you do it offline, you're talking to one person, two people, three people. On the internet, you could be reaching millions. Uh, thankfully, Christopher Demelka never got that famous, but Stefan Molyneux has a large following. Since I did the, my, my, my most recent upload on him, he's gained like 7,000 subscribers. I was just looking at that today, you know, doing a YouTube search. I mean, 7,000 subscribers in about... Um, you know, what was it, two weeks or something like that? So people are listening, and that's the big thing to say. So the fact of the matter is, people are using the internet to manipulate people and brainwash people in a certain way. And some of it is just the emotionally inducing content. And that is going to come from every single example that we put forward, where you're going to have this person telling you just that no one else cares about you. And that's, gonna have, that's how they're going to lure the victims. And they're just going to try and put it in them that... I'm the only person out there that will listen to you. I'm just going to give you this overwhelmingly emotionally inducing response to anything you have to say. But the thing is, though, it's not baseless. It's not like these individuals are just getting lucky. I mean, they are learning about things, and they are kind of coming at it from the perspective of someone who is trying to kind of learn about all the different tactics of presentation, persuasion, human psychology, all of those things, and they're actually putting it into motion. And you know, it's like, I mean, when you see the stuff like Michaela Bali disappearing, no one really knows what happened, but it's most likely she met up with some guy from the internet. I mean, someone like that is probably somewhat, um, somewhat able in that area. And when you look at people who are gaining 900,000 subscribers on the internet by putting out emotionally inducing content that tells you, you are broken and the only way to get better is to follow my teachings, people, it strikes a chord with people. And from all of this stuff is a lot of people are just having that sense of um, there is something missing from their life and they do need answers. But the answer isn't a stranger on the internet who's just using you for their own selfishness. The answer is something quite to the contrary, which it is kind of just like, getting offline and fixing the problems in the external world. I mean, a lot of us use the internet for entertainment. We welcome that. But once you kind of use it for, like, therapy, and I don't mean the online therapy communities. I mean, like, you're using YouTube videos and a YouTube host to get all your answers in life. Maybe things like that are a little bit problematic and a little bit destructive. Or how about this? Using online dating as a form of therapy. Using, like, online friendship websites as a form of therapy. 
using some stranger on the internet who might not even be real, catfish, 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 might not even be a real person as your sort of online therapeutic outlet. That is where the danger is happening. Well, what do you think about this? Do you actually have any sort of um, bizarre instances on social media that you would like to share? Maybe if you'd like to throw out even, what is one of the weirdest encounters you've ever had on social media? And can you ever think of somebody who potentially could meet the definition of uh, brainwashing or extreme conditioning that we've been talking about? I put forward a couple examples about the human traffickers, Stefan Molyneux and Christopher Nemelka. If you have any other examples, I would love to hear from you as well. Well, that's all for me now. Stay safe, everybody, and remember, the internet is a wide open place. It can be a very good tool for us, and it can be a very good source of entertainment, but 